Let's take a look at a new Polygon. This is from their Siskiyou line of mountain bikes, the model T7. If you aren't familiar with Polygon, well don't worry because I am and here's what you need to know. They're popular overseas, but they're rapidly gaining popularity in the US where they're distributed by bikes online. Think bike shop quality, but direct to consumer pricing, that's Polygon. And of course, bikes online. Let's get straight into what makes a Siskiyou T7 a Siskiyou T7. Starting up top at the bars, which are alloy 780mm Entity Expert bars. Now that's expert with no E, just expert. If you're not familiar with the Entity brand, you will be by the end of this video. It's Polygon's in-house component brand. It's decent stuff, and they like to use it like here, on these grips, which are rubber lock-ons. Beside the right grip, a not Entity part. There are other brands here too, such as Shimano for the shifter. A Shimano Deor trigger shifter. 12S, that equals 12 speeds. Sitting above the shifter, Tektro hydraulic disc brakes. I'm familiar with Tektro but I haven't had any experience with this model, Orion 4 Plus 2P. That has a meaning we'll discuss in a second. For now, just know the fancy yellow bushings match that fancy yellow text. Entity handlebars already seen. The stem is, yep, Entity. It's a 35 millimeter stem. Headset, that's FSA, and it's a nice sealed bearing headset. The head tube, tapered for a fork. That is also tapered. This is a RockShox Recon Silver RL. It has fancy buzzwords like solo air, compression to lock. This is for the 27.5 model, meaning 150 millimeters of travel. 27.5, of course, the wheel size. And well, before we get there, let's talk about this axle, or should I say maxle? How many times do you get to work that into a conversation? 15 by 110 boost, and that's running through a Shimano MT41032 hole hub. Part of a wheel set made up of Entity XL2 disc 35mm rims, that's 35mm internal width, tubeless tape pre-installed. Tires, their site says V-Tire. Nope, on the bike I received even better. Hans Dump from probably my favorite overall mountain bike tire brand, Schwalbe. I even like their fancy buzzwords like Addicts Speed Grip, which are mountain bike knobby tires with low rolling resistance. At least it's a claim. I think it's accurate. These, of course, 27.5 wheels. The bike also has a 29er variant. I posted a teaser image of this bike a couple of weeks ago, and I had a few people comment and say that the color scheme looked like something Batman would ride. Well, if that's the case, to the drivetrain, which kicks off with pedals that are actually usable. You don't normally see that, normally get plastic pedals. These don't have a brand, they just say alloy flat pedal. The crankset does have a brand, Shimano Model MT510 Boost. These are 170 millimeters, at least on this bike. The external bearing bottom bracket, that's Shimano as well, as is the chain ring, which is 32 tooth. This is all part of a Shimano Deor 12-speed drivetrain setup that, ooh, wait a minute, what is that? Look at that snazzy protector. I could almost use that as tire tread to drive up a mountain. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Where, what, the Deor? Yes, Deor. The entire drivetrain is Shimano Deor, eh, almost. With the exception of this cassette, which is a Sunrace, model MZ800, 11 to 50, one tooth, and there's your 12 speeds. Another spec change, the website says this should be a Novatech rear hub, but it's Shimano. I'll take it. Front and rear hubs match, so does the suspension. Front is a RockShox, so is the rear. This is a RockShox Deluxe Select Plus. 210 by 55, which combines with the pivot system to give the bike 140 millimeters of rear travel. Some people don't know this, but a pivot system is more than just a shock. There is this frame part, and speaking of the frame, ALX Trail Series Aluminum, available in multiple sizes and two variants, this 27.5 and of course a 29er. There are two colors, a blue-green and a gray-black. This obviously is the gray-black, and it looks, well, good. Beautiful welds, internal cable routing, clean lines, and the graphics. I mean, just look at these top graphics. There's kind of chrome, and the black text has raised graphics like on the down tube, and then there's, of course, the chrome on the T7. At the very least, it's a look that I like. Both the 27.5 and the 29er variant get 2.6 inch wide tires with ample frame clearance. Back to the pivot system for a quick mention. This 27.5 medium frame has 140 millimeters of travel, but depending upon the frame size and the wheel size, that can vary by five millimeters. 
Along with the gray and black finish and that raised texture, there's also an underside graphic. It says Polygon and it's almost chrome. A closer look at the brakes, 4 plus 2P, that's because the piston count varies from front to rear. Up front is a 4 piston caliper. At the rear, that's 2 piston, hence the 4 plus 2. Both rotors 180 millimeter Shimano in their center lock. This bike comes equipped with a dropper out of the box. It's a Transx 150 millimeter dropper on this particular model. Larger frames have 170 millimeter. Diameter 30.9, the entity seat post clamp has cutouts and cool chrome accents. The saddle, gloss and matte black combo. Brand entity as we expect, model extent, extent with an X. Polygon rates this as a class five mountain bike. I'll let you read this and see what you can make of it. What I see matches up with what I feel the bike is capable of. In just a minute, we'll see how it does out on the trail. First, a couple of other component notes. The dropper is controllable via this underbar remote lever. The Shimano Deor graphic, it color shifts. I'm I just now noticing this, has this been a thing? Also, I know I mentioned the rims were taped for tubeless. The tires, they're tubeless ready as well, so easy conversions for anyone that wants to go the tubeless route. That's my component rundown on this at the time of this video, $1,700 full suspension mountain bike. I'm liking what I see and I have high hopes for this. But it's time for it to prove its metal. Get it on the trail and I'm gonna start out with the boring stuff first. Out of the box, the shifting is well dialed in. The brakes, they didn't rub and they didn't make any noise. That may seem trivial, but trust me, it's not always a given on bikes you have to assemble yourself. Well, footnote, every polygon that I've unboxed thus far, they've all been perfect like this. I rate a bike partially on how well it climbs, and here I'm climbing uphill with only one hand on the bars, and I'm not having to put much effort into it. That's a win. Speeding things up, it does that well too. It's nice and snappy on the top end. I think we'll give enough speed to delight most riders. What's instantly noticeable to me though, it's not so much the top speed, it's the traction at speed, a good combo. And that's not just the tires, that's the full suspension smoothness. I can even take small hops and the camera doesn't even rattle. You gotta love rock shocks and at this price, the entire bike, it's meshing well together. The traction and the smoothness combined to make this like riding on rails. And I'm not talking about rail trails. I mean rails as in roller coaster precision cutting into turns. And I'm not the only one that thinks so because I let multiple other riders have a go with the Siskiyou T7 multiple riders on varying trail types, and all gave it a thumbs up even when I misquoted the price and accidentally said it cost 500 more dollars than it actually does. They still liked it. That says something. What also says something is when my buddy Jose took it to some trails in Tennessee for a day of fun, that turned into him having the bike for a week of fun. The same results. Impressed with the build quality, the style, and most importantly, the handling of the bike. And this is on trails that he's never ridden before, the first time down the trails. To be on a bike that you have confidence in, where you can push it a little more and a little more with every passing foot, that's a big deal. And speaks to just how well this is all tuned together, especially the suspension. You saw me taking a seated hop. I see the same smoothness here, and. If you listen closely, there isn't any clank or any creaking. This frame and all the components are taking all that they are given. I can literally hear the traction from the tires on the dirt. And more importantly, when the tires leave the dirt, I don't hear anything when they come back down other than just trail sounds. That's really, really good. And there's another factor that makes a mountain bike a true mountain bike. It's one thing to ride and push and push and push, but the harder you push a bike, more likely you are to crash a mountain bike. It's inevitable, it's going to happen, and when it does, you want a bike that you can pick back up and get right back on, not one that you have to inspect every little detail about. And trust me, I've ridden bikes like that, even expensive bikes, where even if they just fell over, I really have to inspect them. The T7, at least in my experience, is one of those just get back on it and go type bikes. Completely trail capable, or as the hang tag said, class five capable, I'm gonna agree. Let me try to summarize the Siskiyou T7. At the time of this video, the bike is $1699.99 at bikesonline.com. For me, that puts it in a bargain pricing segment, and that's for a bike that is as capable and as well equipped as comparable local bike shop brands. 
that are asking more than a thousand dollars over the cost of this bot for basically the same performance. This is definitely making the most out of what can be found when budget shopping for a full suspension mountain bike that you can actually ride out of the box without having to worry, and more importantly without having to upgrade. This is the point in the video where I usually give pros and cons as I see them, and I'm somewhat befuddled here because pros, well, that part's easy, everything. Now, I'm not saying that there's not something better out there. Even Bikes Online has bikes that are better equipped than this. I'm saying for the money, the performance per dollar, this is quite impressive. And I've had so much fun on the bike, and other people have had so much fun on the bike, it made it hard when I started thinking about cons. But if you were to force me to pick something, the best I can come up with is the head tube angle. It's 65 degrees, which may sound great to you because everyone seems to want slack, 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 but the truth is that the trails that I regularly ride and my love of cross country, 65 degrees works for sure, but it is pushing the envelope of where I'm comfortable. Now, obviously the bike is well more capable than anything I personally will ever throw at it, and that's where the 65 kind of suits it. But for me, if I had to nitpick something, that would be it. So you see how far I'm having to stretch to find cons in a bike that I think has an excellent performance per value metric. And I guess this is where I will end on a bike that I've been ultra impressed with and one that will be very hard to send back. This is a review bike. I'm not paid or sponsored. This is my honest opinion and I'm returning it. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to take a look at it. They have every possible spec and detail on the bike's online website. And by the way, since I'm not sponsored, I don't let anyone dictate what I say or what I do on this channel. You get honest opinions. Because of that, the only way I make money here at Kev Central is very small fractions of a fraction of a cent for every view that someone watches. And also, I use affiliate links. So check my description if you're looking for this bike, or I have many other links down in the descriptions for other bikes, other products. Using those links helps the channel, doesn't cost you anything extra. I'll be looking at some other Polygon models coming soon, so make sure you're subscribed and you have that notification bell active. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. That also helps the channel. Thanks for watching Kev Central. Have a great day.